What's up, everybody? I want to tell you about Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's one of the easiest ways to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting Anchor on Anchor, you can distribute distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. So everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. So download Anchor, the app, or go to anchor.fm to get started. And you know, I'm a veteran, so let's hear some more military cadences. Okay, family, let's get into some hot topics, news you can lose or use. So let's get into football. Football, the Chargers beat the Broncos 19 to 16 in OT. Uh, Yeah, we'll talk about that. The top story I want to talk about is this Olivia Wilde, Jason Sudeikis thing. I really wasn't paying much attention to it, but for some reason, it's like a really interesting story that you would never think that like Jason Sudeikis would have any kind of like story, but there was a whole tryst going on um, about his ex-fiance Olivia Wilde's romance with Harry Styles on a forgotten Apple Watch. So the couple's form so the nanny has been through with these two. She has been like they have been running this poor lady ragged. So the couple's former nanny alleged in a new interview with Daily Mail that Ted Lasso star uncovered the relationship details on a tech device Wild left behind while filming Don't Worry Dar- Darling, which stars Styles. Wild had allegedly left the watch which contained flirty texts between her and Styles, and Sadukas stumbled upon these messages on Monday, the morning of November 9th. When I came back from the weekend off, Jason was crying and crying. I didn't know what had happened, and the nanny claimed. After I got the kids ready, Jason comes downstairs and, and was having some coffee. He was crying, and he was a mess, and she said, she left us, she left us. The nanny who helped take care of the couple's two kids, Daisy 6 and Otis 8, further alleges that Saduka swiftly banned staffers from listening to any of the Harry Styles music in this house at the revelation. The couple called the accusations false in the statement. The claim in the former nanny who was not identified has been on an 18-month campaign of harassing us, which I did read the nanny's text messages, which I will definitely tell you about. So the woman also claimed to the outlet that Sudeikis, 47, was completely blindsided while Wild 38 broke things off despite the Don't Worry Darling director claiming their separation was amicable. He was so broken hearted, I felt for him, the nanny alleged. He started telling me details of her relationship with Styles, and he said she put the move on him, she put the first move on him. The nanny also claims that Dukas threw himself under Wilde's car one time to try to stop her from leaving to go see the watermelon sugar singer at 28, which is Harry Styles. She went back into the house, and he went in. It was a back and forth. He was going doing it on purpose to make her... Let her leg going to see Harry, the nanny claimed. Jason told me she made this salad and she made her special dressing, which she's leaving with, her salad, to have dinner with Harry. The special dressing is very funny. I don't know what it is, but they have the recipe. Things ultimately reached a breaking point when Sadukis allegedly fired the child care worker. Then when he was intoxicated, he said, you're going to get your stuff and get out. Why are you sending her messages? I said, Jason, you've been drinking and I can tell that you're drunk. You're very angry and I'm afraid of you, the nanny alleged. 
while the Duke is separated in 2020 after more than seven years together by January 2021, Wilde took her love with Styles public, though she denied that she left Sudu left Sudukas for the former One Direction member. Things turned even uglier for the exes when Wilde was publicly served legal papers in April while she was talking on a panel at, at CinemaCon. Jason's actions were clearly intended to threaten me and catch me off guard while alleged though Sadukas claimed he never intended for legal papers to be served publicly. It's just been a messy, messy mess. And that movie, Don't Worry Darling, was supposed to have like different actors, but she replaced actors in it. It was just like a whole mess of things. And yeah, other news, Tom Brady, he spotted out without his wedding band amid the Giselle divorce rumors. And he went to Rob, Robert Kraft's wedding. Of course, you know, he married some young pretty thing. Um, the, the, the night show host James Corden apologized to restaurant owner who called him an abusive customer. This is James Corden, as friendly as he is on TV. I hear a lot of like stuff about him out there. Um, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's Netflix show will air in December. Um, what else is going on? Brad Pitt is dating some mystery man. Um, yeah. And Kanye West is in talks to buy parlor, which a lot of people think this was a, like pretty much because listen, at, at some point, and I don't feel sorry for Kanye at all, let's be clear. But um, at some point, Kanye, uh, and I'll read you about it. So what's happening with that is that Candace Owens' husband owns Parlor. He, well, he's a CEO of Parlor, and a lot of people are thinking that um, Candace, like, pretty much manipulated the dude into buying it, which is not shocking because Kanye, he's literally kind of out there right now. Um, yeah, it's just, it says Candace on hanging out with Kanye West and defending his racism and anti-Semitism just so Kanye would buy her husband's spelling social media platform is a reboot of Ocean's Eleven and that I didn't know I wanted. Um, and then Kanye talked a lot of trash about George Floyd's family and his family is considering a lawsuit. Um... Yeah, I mean, Kanye, at some point, I don't know if someone can get a power of attorney over that man. I'm sure Kim probably could because, you know, that's her child's future, her child's money that she probably wants to take a hold of. They are making a new Twister movie. I don't know if you can really redo the original. It was pretty good. I mean, sometimes when they redo stuff, it doesn't come out right. Seeing if there's anything worth talking about. They asked if you were at a barbecue and you had a choice between Sunkiss or Fanta, which one would you choose? I don't like orange pop and they're both of their orange, but if it was a, if it was cherry, I would definitely choose Sunkiss. Um... People are still talking about Selena and Haley hanging out. Anything else worth? Tim Allen, who is definitely tired of the woke media, he tweeted out, who is the true is a face of woke? Do wokies have a clubhouse in someone's backyard or maybe a cute yet safe playpen somewhere? And a lot of people were like, remember that time Tim Allen avoided prison for selling coke by diming out all his friends? So, yeah, Tim Allen allegedly sold coke and was going to get in jail. Uh, but he ratted out some people. Somebody said, Tim Allen, a product of Wife's of Burberry, ratted out his drug trafficking colleagues in exchange for three years rather than life. Called Republicans who testified at January 6th hearing rats that Carolee Smartass wouldn't have lasted a day in Chicago Neighborhood Clubhouse. And this is from Gary Ray Betts on Twitter. 
Tim Allen is in a special category where the tweets are basically inoffensive and harmless because the tweets are completely incoherent. Guys kind of just saying stuff. Um, I mean, who do the, the our beloved Tim Allen was selling drugs? I didn't know that. I definitely did not know that at all. Let's see what else we want to talk. We could talk about that's worth it. Wendy Williams is opening up a restaurant. I'm like, Wendy, is Wendy sane enough to do that? Um, yeah. Rebel Wilson cozies up to her girlfriend. I did not know she was out of the closet. Yeah, that's literally it. I'll check one more news source, source before we get into our beloved TikTok stories. And I have some funny ones tonight. Some interesting ones and some funny ones tonight. Let's see. Let's check this out here. See what if it's in, worth anything talking about. What's the cheapest thing someone can buy you that would make you happy? Mm-hmm. Warm bread. Warm bread or some gummy bears. I love some Haribo gummy bears. Um, Superfly actor Kaylin Walker was sentenced to 50 years in prison after being convicted of raping teens and women. And so they did a Superfly reboot. And the guy that played in that movie was sentenced to 50 years for raping, for rape. It's wild. Absolutely wild. Mm -mm -mm. One of the singers that he allegedly raped was the singer Kalani. Um, Yeah. That is wild. Let's see what else is going on that we would even want to talk about. Missy Elliott gets a street named after her in her hometown, much deserved. Let's see what else is today is Eminem's birthday. He is fifty. Let's play some Eminem. Happy birthday, Slim Shady. Who knew he lived to be 50? See? See what happens when you turn your life around? Candace Owens responds back to the whole George Floyd thing to Kanye. She said, George Floyd's family didn't even stop by his house to collect his belongings. They left his car and personal items abandoned in his house. Now they're mad. My documentary tells the truth about fatal levels of fentanyl discovered in his autopsy. This is what I say about this. Even if he was on drugs, he probably could have lived if he wasn't down in that position with the officer's knee on his neck. Also, the officer pleaded guilty. So, you know, do, do do family do things for Spotlight? Absolutely. I mean, they probably did not care much for him, you know, but in, in something like this, you know. But does not negate the fact of what happened. So, yeah. What else is there to talk about? LeBron's son, Bronny, has made a deal with Beats by Dre. Um, That's their first high school athlete getting that. So LeBron is getting his son all the way out of his pocket. That's how you're supposed to do it. Madonna's dancing on TikTok. Madonna, she is living her best life. She got a BBL and everything. I mean, how can you not love that? California becomes the first state to plant to ban plastic bags. Plastic produce bag is that that. 
the California is literally trying to save the planet while we're all just listen I have a lot of plastic bags I got a lot I got a lot of them all right let's get into our TikTok stories without further ado Men a chance. What do you think would happen if a guy made the same video saying it is day 7,346 and woefully the men and women on TikTok are still fighting over which demographic insults the other more often? Let me just say, as a person who has been called ugly on many occasions in my lifetime, I've been called ugly by women, men, teachers, children, dogs, the 2009 staff at the Pacific Science Center. Let's just put this to bed once and for all. You're all mean. You all got nasty spirits out there, and that's why you're all on TikTok calling other people ugly, downing other people's looks, talking about how other people should be living their lives, who other people should be dating. All the while, you're still single. All the while, you're still not that cute. It does not matter how many houses you investigate, yours still has roaches in it. Every single day I get on here, I see at least one man with his little podcast mic talking about how he doesn't want fat women or single mothers or women who have had sex with more than two people in their entire lives at the age of 28. Meanwhile, these women he's talking about aren't even in his DMs. They don't want him. I don't want him. And then right after that, I'll see a video of some girl who's posting a picture of herself next to her ex. Like, this is who I settled for. This is who I cried over. Meanwhile... Old girl isn't exactly looking like Kate Upton herself. As a matter of fact, ma'am, let me tell you a little story about a teapot and a kettle. There's a reason why y'all ended up together. Because you know what? At the end of the day, everybody's shallow. Everybody has their preferences and what they like and what they don't like. Some people just feel the need to vocalize it more than others. And let me tell you something. There's nothing in this world uglier than a mean-ass bitch. There is no weight on a scale, height on a ruler, amount of hair on your head, armpits, legs, or otherwise structure of your face that's ever going to make you uglier than some motherfucker who feels the need to get on here and down people to halt their own insecurity or try to make other people feel bad about what they like or what they think is attractive or not attractive. That's just loser shit. Sorry. And as a matter of fact, you know what? I'll never forgive you people because you know what you people made me do? You made me actually go seek out couple TikTok. I've been watching the video. I needed something more uplifting on my feed that gave me more of a faith in the human connection and in relationships. I've been watching Kyle and Brittany go to Disneyland together. I've been watching Jason and Maria go to Malibu Nights 1 and 2 Electric Boogaloo having a great old time. Because it makes me feel better than seeing all of you people fight over stupid shit. It's just, it's so much more warming to my heart. In conclusion, I need you people to do one of two things for me. I need you to either shut the hell up by your own volition, or I need you to walk out into the actual world and go find you a dick or pussy to suck on to stop all your fucking crying. Because I'm tired of hearing it. And that is from a self-proclaimed ugly guy. And he is so right. Everybody has their own preferences. Who cares what you like? Just, yeah, what he said. Let's go to the next one. We are hearing this morning for the first time from the Louisiana family who rescued a kidnapped woman and killed her abductor. 29-year-old Bethany Arsenault was freed Friday after a two-day ordeal. Police say Scott Thomas, her ex-boyfriend and father of her child, took her hostage. She was allegedly a victim of domestic abuse for years. Her family organized a search for her. When they approached a nearby abandoned house, they heard a scream. She just hollered. She hollered like her life was in danger. And when they heard the hollers, they said, man, just a chill went through their body. A dozen family members stormed that home. They told police Thomas was stabbing Arsenault, so they shot him to save her. No charges have been filed against any of them. That is an absolute crazy story. Glad that she survived. Man, if only family could get that kind of justice and get to their loved ones before the police do. I mean, this is a case of not waiting on the law to find. And like I said, they were just lucky this time because I wish I bet everyone wishes they could be able to stop the murder of their loved one. Yeah. Quick recovery to her. Next story. I don't make TikToks at all, but I thought I would make one about this since they think it's so funny, right? 
Okay, so apparently my man, who I have been with for the past six years, have two kids with, who is my baby daddy. I got some money from income tax, so he got back with me. Yeah. Okay, so. Then, tonight, we've been back together for a minute now. Tonight, he decided to tell me that he loved me. All kinds of other stuff. And then, wanted to text me after I fell asleep and tell me that he's been talking to someone else. Waited till I was asleep. Then, they think it's so funny that she messaged me here on TikTok and was like, girl, I think you should leave our man with a laughing face, with a crying laughing face. Yeah, it's so fucking funny, isn't it? Yeah, let me, let me show y'all proof. the most heinous thing a man has either said to you or a woman in your presence so in my sophomore year of college i was friends with benefits with this guy um and we were fuck buddies my freshman year of college spent all summer talking to each other and then we go back to school so we definitely were not romantic I, we both knew that i think but i really thought that we were friends with benefits we were in the same friend group we hung out a lot we got along really well um it was just very casual and convenient of a dynamic and i was pretty happy with it so it's the first big party back at school and afterwards we end up leaving together um we're both pretty drunk but it's all very standard we've hooked up many times before uh we get to his new apartment which i had not been to before and it's a two-level apartment so there's the kitchen and everything on the ground floor then the stairs up and then there are rooms so we're in his room and we hook up and it's just a very standard hookup uh the one thing that is weird is that i ask if he has a condom because we give us protection every single time and He's like, no, I don't have a condom. I'm so sorry. He does a show of like going through all the drawers and he doesn't have anything. And he's like, I haven't hooked up with anyone since. I'm super safe, blah, 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 blah. Um, this is a poor judgment call on my part. I never had unprotected sex before, but I was pretty tipsy and I wanted to do it. And I was like, okay, I trust you. So we have unprotected sex. Everything's fine. It ends. Um, and then right as we finish having sex, like I am still butt ass naked on his bed. He here's his roommates come home downstairs and he's like hey i'm gonna go say hi to my buddies and i'm like sure so he trots on downstairs and when he does so he closes the door like kind of slams it shut but it bounces back open so the door is kind of open and i'm lying there naked on the bed and i'm like do i get up to go and close the door not really sure because i don't want anyone to possibly see me naked so as i'm starting to like pull my clothes on because i'm gonna go come hang out with him too i'm also friends with his roommates uh he starts talking to them about the sex we just had in graphic detail um and not just in graphic detail like very disrespectful like this bitch let me bra her and they're like you didn't use a condom and he's like no like i had one but i told her i didn't um which is obviously sexual assault um so i'm getting really shocked and he just says more and more degrading things about me and finally i'm like i'm done like i'm i, I start immediately call myself an uber put my clothes on and i'm sitting there waiting for the uber to come this man will not shut up talking about me in a very disparaging way. So when the Ubers I'm in away, my clothes are on, I just start walking downstairs. And right as I'm walking downstairs, tiptoeing, because I want to fucking sneak out and not have to see them, he goes, hey, sorry, boys, like, there's some pair of titties waiting upstairs for me. And I, like, wave to them, and I go, hey, actually, the titties are down here right now. And then I walk out the door, and I got in the Uber, and I left. Yeah, guys, if you like and this has been talked about before if you lie about having a condom or taking one off yet yeah, in this in this age of 2022 that is considered sexual assault so ladies too like if you sneak in the condom off which i don't know how a man can like think that feel not feel that but it happens so you know sorry to this girl young love young sex young f buddies you know it happens Sorry to this girl. Next story. <laughs> Actually, that was just a bear attack. Don't worry about that. But anyway, this has been the end of news you can lose or use. Uh, yeah, bring your own condom. If you're going to be F buddies, bring your own condom.
that's what I would do if I was an F buddy. Because if you're F buddies, that means you're having sex with people, he's having sex with people. Yeah. It's just a smart idea to do that. Other than that, guys, we'll see what happens in this crazy world tomorrow or next week. But I will definitely be back with you for some messy TikTok and news. See ya.